Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Classic Reddit. Today's Ask Reddit question is, Redditors who have found yourself in life, how did you do so, and what does that mean to you? This reply by Angelus Yukito. For me, finding myself was realizing I can't be happy with life until I'm happy with myself. Someone once asked me why I was so grumpy, and I realized I didn't know. Finding yourself to me means being the expert on yourself so that you can identify and prove the parts you don't like. The day you look your reflection in the eye and genuinely like the person you see, and that you're not lying to yourself, that's the day you get there. Realize that you are awesome. And coast from there. Funny, almost the opposite happened to me. Someone commented that I seemed to be happy all the time. It made me realize that, deep down, I was. In spite of all the shitty stuff that was going on, it helped me get back in touch with the simple, easily pleased nine-year-old I once was, and deep down, still am. It made it easier to ignore my bitch of a wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it made it easier to ignore my bitch of a wife who complained that I scowled all the time and realized she was just projecting her pain onto me. So that comment went from like really positive to like resentful. <laughs> this is gonna sound a little lame, but I felt a, f I felt a kind of enlightenment. Realization of the culmination of my entire life moment last night driving home from picking up snacks. My birthday was a couple days ago, and it hit me that all that has happened to me and all I've been in the last year, and how far I've come in four years, I've been all over the country, I've loved, I've lost, I've fallen in love again, I've gotten engaged, enlisted, moved out from home, moved across the country, hoboed my way across the Rockies, done a lot of drugs, quit a lot of drugs, made friends, lost friends, got tattoos, got piercings, taken out piercings, worked odd jobs, I've seen friends get married, friends have babies, friends go to jail, friends kill themselves. It's been a hell of a ride. And all kind of it hit me last night. I can't imagine how crazy the next four years, or even the next year, will be. Who knows where I'll be, and what kind of person I'll become. But I guess I'm just finally in a place where I can sit back and enjoy the ride. You know, it really is a delayed reaction sometimes. It only occurred to me a couple months ago that I've been ridiculously lucky my entire life. I can't wait to see what happens in my life before karma catches up to me. Oh, an epic post by the mail stops here. In 2007, I got home from four years in the infantry in the Marines and was lost. I couldn't get a job and I was desperately, severely depressed. My mentor and commanding officer told me to find myself again. I didn't have a clue what he was talking about. One day I decided to pack up some clothes and a few other things and just traveled until I found another vet. I come across in Georgia. He was in the same boat. We both didn't have very much. One day we were at a restaurant in Angusta, Georgia when this young couple came up to us and asked us if we were heading out to do some hiking because of our backpacks and stuff. And we both looked at each other like, no, why? And that's when my life started to change. My buddy and me had lunch with these people and they told us about the Appalachian Trail. Me and my buddy started in April at Springer Mountain and hiked the whole 2,000 miles and ended in late August. And through the journey, I found myself and what it means. You have to love yourself. You have to go outside of your protective bubble and do things that are going to excite you. Don't fall into your own pit of thoughts and feelings. Make new friends. And most of all, you're doing something right now that makes you happy. And if you're not, drop it like a bad date. Oh, another epic post. I was bullied a lot when I was a kid. I didn't know why, I never really found a place safe from it because my older brother and sister were probably the worst perpetrators of it. I was not accepted at school and so the bullying continued there. It wasn't a specific person either, it was the majority of the class. That's just for backstory. I'm over it now. It did have a lasting effect on me throughout adolescence and into adulthood and even up until last year. 
I found that I didn't know how to act. I knew how to act based on the people that I was around and to do what was socially acceptable and all that. But I never knew what my natural reaction was to people, things, events, etc. I was just kind of there to be like a fake person. I never felt quite right. I never felt comfortable expressing myself because I was subconsciously afraid of the bullying coming back. I projected a lot of my insecurities onto other people to maintain a nice, tight, constraining comfort zone. I took any kind of rejection very, very hard, and I basically felt like the biggest piece of in the world. I started therapy last year and it helped immensely. I feel like I'm my own person and I'm getting better at expressing myself. Still not quite there yet. I'm still having trouble processing what my natural reactions are to things. Not that I've trained them to be, but that will come with time. Actually, using Reddit has helped quite a bit as well. I've been able to express myself how I would like to be here, and I've found that the imaginary hammer drop was all in my head. It's a skill like any other that needs the practice to be improved. I've taken baby steps, and it has paid off a lot for me. For the first time in a long time, I'm comfortable with myself. I'm comfortable with silence. I'm comfortable with how I think, no matter how pervasive it might seem at times. There's no greater gift that I could possibly have given myself. I'm not sure if it will, but I hope this helps. Too long didn't read. Therapy helps if you can find a good therapist. Hey, look at that. Their TLDR was something that they didn't mention at all in the rest of it. <laughs> I stopped giving a fuck. Oh, I said the word. I'm trying to, you know, like, I'll be like, oh, those mother, you know, you, you get it. You think it, you know, but I don't say it. And I guess that helps with analytics. It's supposed to. I stopped giving it and started saying no to things. I stopped trying to make other people happy and started to just focus on myself. I basically do what I want all the time. And it's great. I did that earlier this summer when my friend invited me to join his Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I assumed it would be weird and nerdy, but I had never done anything like it before, so I decided to show up. Almost three months later, and I've made some amazing friends, learned a lot about how much people can hide, and also learned a lot about myself, including how I should and shouldn't treat people. It's been fantastic, and I always look forward to seeing them. I recently started saying yes to more things. As soon as I did start saying those things, saying yes was a lot easier, and I would talk to many more people. My social anxiety slightly went down. This made me really sad. It reminded me of when I dropped out of my school's Europe trip two years ago, because I was too uncomfortable to share a room with three guys I didn't know for two weeks. I missed an amazing opportunity not only to explore the world, but to discover who I was and to ease my social anxiety, and also better interact with strangers. I still have social anxiety and depression, and I wake up every day thinking about how much of a huge mistake I made. Maybe it's just the way you and I look at it, but I would say that you started giving up rather than stopped giving up. <laughs> I cut lies and lying out of my life entirely. Nothing but the truth and reality wherever I go now. I had no choice but to finally know exactly who I am. I encourage everyone to stop lying. No exaggerations, no embellishments, nothing. One of my best friends, favorite people in the world is exactly like this. And it's precisely why I love him as much as I do. I never have to wonder where I stand with him and I never have to worry if I've said anything to annoy or hurt him because I know that he'll tell me. It's allowed us to have a very frank, open relationship, and I'm grateful to know him and consider him a close friend. I don't think people realize how much effort goes into lying. I'd rather think about boobs and be honest and lazy. <laughs> I've always lived my life like this. I was diagnosed with autism when I was 13, and I reason that's why A, I'm a ter terrible liar, and B, never see a reason to lie to someone, regardless of whether I, it might make them happier. And I'd like to think my friends appreciate it. While I can be inappropriate at times, they know 100% of the time where they stand with me. Amazingly hard for me. I lie a lot. I don't mean to, or think about it, but I do. Oh, there's some honesty. Ah, oh, a big post by the great ninja Yuffie. 
I was actually really young and probably won't help you at all, but I love my mother. She was always really outgoing and loved talking to and helping people. I was a really nervous and shy kid. One day I was hiding behind my mom's legs while she was chatting with a stranger and I thought, man, my mom has a lot of fun. I'm just kind of standing here not doing anything. Why don't I be more like mom? And I just did. I became an outgoing person and retained her loving and caring that she has always taught me. I realized a lot of people are just afraid of sticking out and they shouldn't be. When you're the one sticking out, most people just follow you and the ones who want to lead, you know, sometimes they, a lot of people don't want someone to lead, they're looking for someone to follow. And in my opinion, more people should be the change they want to see in the world. Being an outgoing person allows me to affect the world around me greatly. Oh, an epic post by Bobo Block. Bobo Block. My grandfather died shortly after my 18th birthday. It was a sobering welcome into adulthood. There are a lot of times people say that know exactly when they transform from a boy to a man. I wouldn't exactly call this moment that, but it helped me understand what kind of man I wanted to be. The thing is, I hardly knew my grandfather. I lived 10,000 miles away for the last 14 years up to that point. In that time span, I saw him twice. And that's all I could think about when I was there burying him on our family mountain. After a while, I kind of just sat near him and thought how much of a tragedy it was to not know family and that he couldn't know his grandson. I decided I wanted to take the time to really know people. And I decided I wanted to be a man that he could be proud of. Someone who pulls himself up from his bootstraps, like he did. It gave me a real sense of purpose. It's not fully defined yet, since I'm young, not an excuse, but knowing I have this drive to pursue whatever I want makes me feel like I've found myself in some way. For me, it was twofold. One, leave your comfort zone. Let's say yes to the crazy adventures. Two, don't base your happiness on someone else, i.e. the person you're in love with. This reply to Redditors who have found yourself in life. How did you do that? And what does it mean to you? By Pistanish. I was at a mall and the map said, you are here. And there I was. I think it would be really funny if every map instead of something like, you are here, Brian, because for almost everyone who sees it would be like, fuck. And, oh, I censored the wrong word there. <laughs> And for that one guy named Brian, it would be like, Ah, oh, yeah, this is my mole. Paraphrase of a Dimitri Martin joke. I thought that sounded kind of familiar. I'm not sure if anyone can truthfully say I've found myself. Life is a journey. People at age 50 are different from who they were at age 20. Our personalities are in constant fluctuation, though it seems that something essential about a person's character must persist through the years. Events completely out of our control can alter forever the very fabric of our being. Look at 9-11, for example, or more recently, the Boston bombings. If the man who lost his legs that terrible day told you the night before that he found himself, is he telling the truth? I'm not sure, sure. And it doesn't have to be a tragic event. Falling in love, the birth of a child, a moment of clarity brought in by prayer or meditation or drugs. Life is a long and winding road. Some days you're in the driver's seat. Other days you can't catch a cab to get out of the rain. But I can honestly say that I haven't found myself, and that's okay. It's funny how many disagreements with people are caused by people, multiple participants of a conversation having different definitions and words for the same subjects, right? But this person isn't really they're, they're getting into semantics about what finding yourself means, but the, to, to other people, when you're saying you're finding yourself, it means that you, you know what you want out of life. And there very much is a distinction between people who are living in a way where they know what they want and people who aren't even trying to figure out what they want. They've just accepted that they don't get what they want. That That is a very common mentality that a lot of humans exhibit. And the reality for anybody alive now, 
fucking A protest. My cat has been all up on me this entire video. He is just all in my face and he is adorable and cute, but he's knocking everything over because he's purring and rolling everywhere. He's just like he's drugged. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, my point is that you really do have to prioritize what makes you feel more meaning. You have to expose yourself to a lot of situations so that you get to a point where you have the experiences where you know what you want to do with your time and you set up a lifestyle and a life that allows you to pursue those things and you're in the habit of doing that. That doesn't explain the mentality that most people have because most people are in a stuck complaining, the world is what happens to you, it's outside of your control, give up sort of mentality. Very cynical, very bitter. They've projected a world of hardship, but the reality is, from my opinion, all these people who are really cynical are just fucking ignorant. Because if you look at history and you think for a moment that we don't have it better than people even a hundred years ago, you have no idea how much information we use on a daily basis that was just impossible to even know like 40 years ago, let alone a hundred years ago. Every moment you are alive, you have the potential to be changing your life and changing the lives of the people you love. And you can tell yourself that that's not true for you for whatever reason, but it's bullshit. Because you're alive, your heart is beating, and you're able to hear this, that means you're watching something or you're listening to something. You have access to the internet. You can use a phone, you can use a computer. You can get in touch with individuals. You can watch content that will change your mentality. You're the only one who can change your circumstance. And no matter what anyone else tells you, that's always true. And if you're blaming other people for your situation, things aren't going to improve. The only way to really take control of your circumstance is to accept that it's your fault. And I know that's hard, you shouldn't beat yourself up, but you have to understand that if you don't look at your life as a result of the things that you do, you'll never get anywhere. Because your life is the result of the things you do every day. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do something for eight or 10 hours. You should understand that when, whenever you hear people be like, oh, yeah, I work 10 hours on this, people are always exaggerating. Most people hide their struggles, they lie, and they exaggerate on a daily basis in some way, in a joking way. That's how society is in most places. And that's true in many places in the world, regardless of where you live. And you gotta fight through all that. It's hard. But it's worth it. And you can get there. Alright? Alright everybody, thanks for watching. If you want to make this kind of content, please reach out to us. Go to our About page on this YouTube channel. And then check out the link, do the capture code, send us an email. We want to do a Zoom call with you. We're looking for people who are interested in making content on YouTube. Where you read, it's like a teleprompter, right? You just record your screen and read and react to the things in front of you. You can browse and pick the things based on what you're interested in. You have a lot of flexibility. And this is something that's great with YouTube because you can do research on like what kind of stuff people are searching for and then make videos about the things people are searching for very quickly because of the flexibility and the speed that you can create content with a tool like this. And we want to improve it and improve it and improve it. So reach out to us. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.